on to join. Sam, not still not there yet, Dan. Yeah. Okay. I'll bring that on there. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to a first of a series, we hope, of presentations um, from Essex Cricket over the next few weeks to hopefully engage with clubs. Um, I think it, the start of this season may not have been what we were all had hoped for as we focus instead on our individual and the community health, but as well as supporting our own local front line. I think there's an opportunity for us all to look at other exciting opportunities that our clubs have and uh, the opportunity to engage with the wider development of clubs as well as enhancing the offer that our clubs offer. So uh, maybe something different will come out of all of this. But a key part of the success of the game in Essex has been all about this in our past, our present and in the future. So we hope that you find this and the future webinars to be of use. We ask you to reflect on each of these and perhaps for one thing that uh, you can do now that will grow and sustain your club whilst enhancing the community as well tomorrow. We're also very grateful to Wow Hydrate who've supported these webinar programs, so thank you to them. Um, so I'd also like you to be aware that these presentations should be recorded and available by, via the county website. So. Um, if any of your colleagues want to uh, listen in to any of them or can't make any of the times that you can see on the screen right now, um, then be aware that they should be able to get in and make use of them in the future. Um, we hope that these presentations will be interactive as well so that we can answer your questions and make sure that the information is relevant for you. So to do that, um, we've got our chat room that hopefully most of you have either used on other similar um, sites or if you're not aware hopefully on the right hand side you'll find a box where you can type your questions hopefully Arfan is listening in today for us Arfan Akram who many of you know covers the East London area and he will pick up on some of them a bit later but all the questions that we can't answer today we will put in a question and answer section separately and make sure you get them. And similarly, if you have other questions following these seminars, please just drop us a line and we will do our best to answer them for you. So I want to make sure we introduce who's on this call today. Um, first of all, I'm Graham Pryke. Most of you know me from the Essex uh, cricket site. I work in rural Essex. I'm delighted that we've managed to get Duncan Jenkinson from ECB facilities to join us. He's got a massive task at the moment because of furloughed staff. Duncan, do you want to say a quick hi? Hi everyone, yeah that's right. I'm, I'm covering just the 10 counties at the moment. Um, but I know Essex clubs pretty well. I've played for Whitton for a number of years. So um, yeah, I'm here to support the Essex team uh, through this, this challenge, but obviously in the longer term to try and improve facilities across the county. Brilliant. Thank you, uh, Duncan. We'll hear much more from him very shortly. I've said our fan is in the chat room. We might get a few minutes from him going through some questions. So, hello, Arfan. Hello, everybody. Great stuff. Oh, can um, you hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry, yeah. Arfan. Thank you. And no, then also, no. we should have Ben Wallace from Cambridgeshire because we've uh, hopefully got some clubs from the Cambridgeshire area. So, Ben, are you about? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Brilliant. And hopefully, I don't know if Sam Rose has joined us yet from Cricket East which is Beds and Huntingdon. I'm here. Excellent. Good timing, Sam. Um, so Sam's with us. So if we move to the next couple of slides, the first one, please, uh, Duncan. And I think uh, to start off with, my, my principal role for the last few weeks has been to try and make sure that clubs explore the funding that's out there. We, we've tried as hard as we can to make clubs aware that there are four principal sources of emergency funding out there if clubs need it. And a lot of clubs benefited from and will benefit from the very first one that I'm about to uh, raise, which is the community fund for small businesses that the local government set aside and is administered by local authorities. 
That's a grant of £10,000 uh, for clubs that have a rateable value less than 15000 Now, a lot of clubs will get the discretionary rate relief for a sports club of between 80 and 100%. So for a lot of clubs out there, you'll be thinking, well, we don't pay anything like that. You're still eligible for this grant, and most clubs now are starting to find that out. Um, unfortunately, because of the staffing levels, probably at local authorities, they are finding that they're a little bit short-staffed, and getting this money out is taking longer than anticipated. They should be circulating that to clubs. You shouldn't need to uh, apply, but all the clubs I've been speaking to, I've encouraged them to get hold of their local authority, their business rates team, just to check if their club is on the list and how they can access that fund. And all the local authorities seem to be working through the list and do seem to be able to act for clubs. So if you haven't already done so, and I am going to try and get hold of clubs, uh, do explore that. You'll see on the slide, if you've got a bigger sports centre or a bigger club and your rateable value is up towards 50 grand, then you qualify for a larger grant. But you're almost certainly going to be sharing that amongst other sports and the impact will be greater. So that's the first source of funds. And we would say that if you get that money, your emergency for most clubs has gone away in the short term. And we wouldn't expect or anticipate any of the others that we now come to supporting your bid for money because you've already had the money that the government have put aside. So the second one is the Sport England Community Emergency Fund. Many of you have also seen that fund and it's a lot more complicated. You've got to fill in an application form that will take some time. But if you can't qualify for either of those two uh, first government ones I've mentioned, then it's a perfectly good source to start applying through that fund. But I would urge you don't start applying for that if you qualify under the first scheme because you're just wasting a lot of time. Um, so that's the first two. I'd want to move across now to Duncan, who will lead us through the next phase of this, please. Thanks, Graham. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, clearly, as well as applying to the government support and to, to Sport England, one of the critical imperatives is not just to get funds into clubs, it's to try and reduce your costs as much as possible to help you through this difficult period. So just some of the areas um, that you might be able to, to make some savings. Um, probably the first thing to do is to sit down as a committee and review your financial position in the short term um, to understand where you might be able to make these savings. Um, there's some good guidance available from Sports England's Club Matters website um, if you need any templates to help you with that. Um, to talk to your, your landlords, whether that's local authorities, parish councils, to see if they will reduce your rents or defer that in the short term to help you through this. Um, they have done that in, in many cases. Um, they're willing to, to talk to you and try and help you out in many cases as well. So again, to chat to your, your landlords. Uh, in terms of grounds, there's some good guidance available from uh, the IOG, which is now known as the GMA. Um, they provided some guidance around how you can keep your grounds ticking over um, with some lighter maintenance work to reduce the costs to the clubs on that front. Um, some clubs have, have been fortunate enough to get insurance payouts for business interruption. Certainly not the case for everyone, but it's worth checking carefully your insurance policies. Um, you may be able to apply for some funding through that as well. Um, and as I mentioned, there's some very good guidance on the, the Club Matters website. Um, you've got templates around financial planning that I mentioned um, and running things like virtual committee meetings and so on. And, communicating effectively with your memberships. That's probably one of the key imperatives in terms of keeping people thinking about cricket, keep them active, and also helping you to fundraise in the short term. So some of the key areas there around how you might be able to reduce your expenditure. So, um, yeah, one of the main reasons I'm here to talk to you this evening is around the two ECB emergency support schemes that we have available. Hopefully you would have come across these. Um, I've got a brief summary of the emergency loan scheme here but there is more detailed guidance notes, FAQs, and a help desk function. So um, I'd encourage you to have a look through the guidance in detail, consider that once you've looked at government support, uh, local authority support, and so on, and see if this scheme might be one that you'd like to apply to. So the aims of the scheme is to support affiliated clubs with funding shortfalls and their essential day-to-day -day running and maintenance costs until we can get back uh, playing cricket, and uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, it's to cover fixed costs, and not to be used to cover surplus income foregone in the year. And by that, we mean 
events that you were planning to to run in the future things like beer festivals and so on unfortunately not likely to happen we're not going to be able to replace your funding for that but what we can do is um help you pay towards your fixed costs so things like rental charge insurance um, and any other reasonable fixed costs that you have there's a list obviously here but we will look at others that may apply to your club as well so um, i'd encourage you to include those key costs within any application so we can consider those so in terms of what you can apply for within this scheme, if your club has a junior section, you can apply for between one and 5K. Adult only clubs between one and 3K. Um, and any loans are interest free. We've announced there won't be any payment until May, repayment until May 2021. So um, we won't be claiming any funding back to help clubs through the short term challenge. Um, and the loan term will be three years. In terms of the application process, this is through an online portal system called IMS. Uh, the website is ims.ecb.co.uk. Clubs need to create a login, uh, register two contacts and complete an online application form with some basic club documents. We've already had examples of clubs that have been through this pretty quickly. So hopefully it's a fairly straightforward process. As I said, there is um, an FAQ uh, and a help desk uh, for you. So hopefully they'll help you through any queries, but obviously, if you need to get in touch, then we have a team at Old Trafford that can help you out as well. So that's the, the summary of the emergency loan scheme. And then the second scheme we have is the Return to Cricket Grants scheme. Again, this is just the brief summary we have here. So we have detailed guidance notes and FAQs for this. So again, I encourage you to take a look at those. Um, the aim of this scheme is to provide help to cricket clubs and leagues with assistance in exceptional circumstances by that we mean those with severe financial challenges and also those that have looked at all other funding sources so as we've already talked about this evening government funds um sport england scheme and the ecb emergency loan scheme um in terms of eligibility for this one um clubs that potentially can't take out a loan because of their constitutional uh, requirements uh, and also clubs with an annual turnover of less than 15k can apply um the reason for that is we're trying to direct the funding to clubs of most need, those smaller clubs that maybe aren't able to access government funding um, or have the capacity to repay a loan. So we're trying to direct the limited grant resource we have to the, the clubs that need it the most. But we will consider exceptional cases on a case-by-case -case basis. So I encourage you, if you are struggling as a club financially, please talk to Essex and let them know how you're, how you're getting on. But your first point, of course, is to look at all the other funding we talked about this evening. Um, and also Cricket Leagues can apply to this fund as well. So in terms of the costs you can apply to, it's the same as the emergency loan scheme. It's fixed costs, not future income. Um, in terms of the amounts you can apply to, junior section, clubs of a junior section can apply for up to 3K, uh, clubs that are adult only up to 1K, and Cricket Leagues up to 2K. And in terms of the application process for this one, it's a case of getting in touch with uh, the guys at Essex. And then if, if you're eligible, you'll need to complete an application form which will come to your ECB representative, which is myself in this case. So that's the brief summary of the returns cricket scheme. Over to you, Graham. I think you're back on again. Hang on. Or is it? No, it's Sea Cover Grants. Yes, thank C -cover you. Sea Cover Grants, over to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thanks. Okay. I, I want to look at the slightly positive side now. Um, this is perhaps following on for those who came to the road shows back in January um, and really hope that there is a future for us, which um, there will be. And I know a lot of clubs are, we're in communication with all the time who'd got schemes, ideas, they wanted new rollers, new mowers, new uh, nets, sight screens, etc. And I just want to make sure that people know that as far as we can, we are still open for business to talk to you. We don't know what the new landscape might look like in the future when we come out of this. Obviously, there's an awful lot of money being ploughed into uh, keeping this country going. And so some of these charities and organisations that you see on the screen now may or may not be able to uh, support us in the future. But as things stand, uh, the, some of those companies listed there have been good sources of income. And I would hope that we can carry on to look to those. And as I say, when we come out the other side, um, and even if you've got ideas now that you're talking to, um, Duncan and I have continued talking to clubs uh about their projects and we want to make sure that you know as well but if you've got something that you you're looking desperately to do because when we come out the other side 
we need to have something really attractive for our members to attract them there. And if, if improving our facilities and what we offer uh, involves needing funding, then obviously we need to be well placed to get that. So we need to look at that. So I start off, we've got the community initiative fund has always been a great source of funds for clubs in the rural part of Essex. So apologies for our uh, friends in the London boroughs and sometimes the South End um, area struggle as well because they're not quite covered but it, it's a great source of funding and, and we would continue to encourage clubs to look at that. The East Fund I'm, we mentioned at our roadshow back in January um, we've kept this one a little bit under the radar over the years but we can offer grants of between 500 and 2,000 pounds to clubs um, on a 50% matching fund and we've supported lots of clubs because of their support and we have the money sitting at Essex this year ready to roll out when uh, we're in a position to actually write checks and, and administer it but uh, again if you're a club that may need a new mower, roller, um, sight screen or something like that where it's a small project struggling to get funding then we will do our best to try and help you to uh, to do that and direct you through east so um, again a very easy application process just need to be in touch with us but please understand some of these schemes may not be uh, as quick as normal because uh, of the restrictions that we're working under as well uh, landfill schemes have always been a good source if you if your club is based within 10 miles of a landfill or a refuge site check out which company it is whether it's veolia or biffa and with a bit of luck you will have a chance of putting in a bid for some funding there as well for a project. Um, a lot of the supermarkets, a um, bit limited as to how you get in there at the moment and I haven't been in one for a few weeks but again they normally offer those little uh, opportunities for raising money for your club and a great source especially if you're looking for pickups when we start again. I put Jack Petty in there because it's a a very well-known uh, cause in the Essex area. Anyone who's got youngsters between the ages of 11 and 25 should have a look at that. It's a great funding project where they, they make awards of 250 pound um, for, for youngsters in your club. And depending on how many you've got, it depends on how many awards you get in the course of a year. They also have leader awards and other awards during there. And just to highlight, but during this particular crisis, any clubs that have got Jack Petchy, they are looking to make offers or awards to youngsters who are doing special work um, at this time, maybe supporting a, a charity or a project or something. So if you're one of those clubs uh, that are in the scheme already and your youngsters are doing some exceptional work, consider putting them forward. It's not a great deal, but I think as much as you'll find out in some of the other um, seminars and webinars we're putting on we believe in keeping that communication going with the club is vital and this is another great way uh, ben do you want to just quickly step in around the mick george fund yeah um no problem the uh, obviously those two funds there um align pretty much to to cambridgeshire and, and cover huntingdonshire as well um Various pots of um, and various size grants available. Those clubs are, are on the call from Cams and, and Hunts. Will probably have, have read up about it and seen it before. Um, supported by Living Sport, the CSP as well. So um, there's lots of support there around being able to access those two particular funds. Great stuff. Thank you for that, Ben. Um, we put fundraising events. We hope that there's going to be an opportunity to do that. We've, uh, Dan and myself have seen recently a, a very successful race night that was run by a local club up in Minster, raised good money, but I think almost more importantly, had a great effect on the actual well-being of the club because it seemed to involve so many people and was very interactive and really got the whole club together. Um, they have very kindly agreed to run some seminars over the next uh, three Mondays, I believe. We're going to put details out about it. I'd really encourage some of you guys to get involved. It looked a fantastic evening. It might be a bit complicated for, for some smaller clubs, but then you could always sort of perhaps pal up with another club and raise some money. But uh, it would be well, well worth 
looking in on those seminars or those Zoom um, meetings over the next few weeks. And uh, Ollie's put a lot of work into it and they're going to share a lot, as I say. It'll be well worth um, exploring it. And we'd be very keen to know of any other successful events that other clubs do. So again, by all means, run it yourself, do well. Um, but let's share it with us because we're all in the same boat here trying to keep our clubs going and we're very keen to get uh, as much stuff as we can. Um, Duncan, do you know about the GoFundMe or somebody want to step yeah. in? Yeah, I'm happy to. So um, across the region, I've been aware of clubs that have used GoFundMe, Just Giving or other crowdfunding websites. So there's an example here from Staines and Leyland. Um, they've put um, a target of £5,000, they've already raised £2,000, but um, it's a good way to try and obviously raise some funding, but also uh, galvanise your local community around the club and what it's trying to achieve. So uh, definitely worth looking at those opportunities as well. Lovely. Thank you. And then I think we've just got a summary that you're going to wrap up. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so just, just to uh, wrap things up, some of the key messages um, from what Graham and I have been talking about is... Um, First of all, to have a look at Government and Sport England's support um, and what opportunities you can have to get some grant funding from them to, to help you out in the short term. Um, again, not just looking for income, but trying to reduce the expenditure you have outgoing through the club um, is obviously key. Um, as Graham just talked about, there's lots of other opportunities for grants and fundraising, not just in the short term, uh, but in the longer term, to try and improve your facilities for the benefit of your members. Um, and we've talked through the, the emergency loan and return to cricket grant. I'm not sure I mentioned this, but the emergency loan scheme is an ongoing scheme. Um, so there's no obviously, rush to apply to that. Uh, it's one for clubs to consider carefully as they review their finances. Um, the return to cricket grant scheme is currently a three month application window. So uh, clubs have got until mid July to, to apply to that one at this stage. So that's the summary. Um, I think yeah, some of the key messages as well is communicating with your members, trying to keep them involved with cricket and active and so on. Um, in the first point of call, contact the guys at Essex Cricket to talk about facility challenges, but obviously I'm here from a regional point of view to try and help you as well. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Duncan, and thank you for joining us. Uh, ben, did you want to just pop in and, and chat about anything for Cambridgeshire, please? Yeah, um, just a, pretty much the same um, route and process uh, for, for any of our clubs that are out there. Um, we've been in touch with... Um, a number of them and had conversations and to check in on them and obviously we'll be using the same process around the funding and the, the grants and any potential loans that are out there. Um, very grateful for for the support that we get from Essex in terms of allowing us to uh, to jump in on these calls and, and take advantage of the resources that they have. Um, so we've got to do quite a lot of work with them and and it's and yeah once again thanks for having us on the call and and um, any questions that may come up, please get in touch with us. I've popped a, um, an email contact in the chat box, which I think will probably go out with the notes as well. So, um, yeah, and we'll obviously be on the calls again uh, next week. So uh, thanks very much, guys. Cheers, Ben. And Sam, similarly for Beds and Hunts. Yeah, yeah, just to reiterate that message and, and, and say thanks to Essex for um, supporting us and, and, and our clubs um, in allowing us to, to take part in these calls. And uh, yeah, similar message really around around the, the different ports of call available for, for clubs to be able to access some funding support um, through this uh, through this tricky period. Um, I put my details in the chat box as well and I'm sure they'll be shared and, and we'll be on the next couple of calls as well. So yeah, if, if anyone needs us, um, we're here and... Um, available to, to answer any of, of your questions. Excellent. Thank you, Sam. Arfan, this is your big moment. What have you got for us, sir? Waiting a long time for this. Um, yeah, first question, or oh, it's a two-part question, so I will pass this on to Dan Feast. Um, will there be a requirement for health checks this year? Uh, and secondly, is there expected to be any impact on the new club mark rollout? Uh, I'm thinking whether we might be able to do some of this background work over the lockdown period when we have time. Winky, please. Yeah, so there's an announcement coming out from ECB um, tomorrow, like through their play cricket update, which will have some information around Club Mark and the new name for it, which will be Safe Hands. Um, as we would say, obviously, you're in the current moment <clears throat> looking at funding, but I think a key part of this is to definitely look at your whole club development plans 
and your skills audits around that and get as much of that prepared and everything. And obviously our fan and Graham are around to support you with that and can help you. Um, and the requirements we understand will be with safe hands, um, which will be the portal will be just to update around um, your requirements, mainly around your skills audit and your club development plan. So we'd, we'd expect you to spend this time to really think about what's your philosophy and your values as a club and the role it plays within your local community. And actually where's the opportunity now in this period that you've got to pause and think where where can we go forward with whether that's with women and girls um, developing your junior programs to activating your community hubs as well which again i say a number of you are doing it's been brilliant to see um, the great examples and one i can think of is uh, braintree who have opened up their ground so their local care home can use it as their recreational area which has been brilliant so spend this time definitely to reevaluate, look at your own club development plan and prepare your information ready to upload um, onto the new safe hands. And I don't know if Duncan has got anything else to add, but I saw, as far as I know, it's going to be an update tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, no, I don't have any other knowledge of that one. So, yeah, that's that's all I know. What else you got, Arfan? Yeah, this one's, uh, uh, I'll read one of them, but it's effectively more or less a similar question from uh, three uh, different colleagues. Um, first, well, well, slightly twisted. The first one is we received our 10K uh, into our bank account today for the small grants. Um, we were unsure we would get the 10K and apply to Sport England about a week ago. Should we contact Sport England to withdraw or other funds joined up? Duncan, I'll throw that to you, but before I sort of do that, there's a couple of different interpretations of that. Uh, we are waiting to hear back from government and Sport England grant. If successful with one, do we advise the other? Uh, and then uh, we also applied to Sport England fund before we heard uh, that we had got council grant. Should we also contact Sport England and withdraw our application? It's a sort of regular theme. Duncan. Yeah, so um, yeah, the first point of call is, is to get your business grant. So that won't affect, um, if you've already got a fund from Sporting and that won't be that won't affect your ability to apply to the business grant. Um, I'll need to just double check in terms of Sport England's policy. I was aware of one club that um, did apply to Sport England and then um, once they got the rate relief grant through, uh, Sport England didn't fund that because they've been helped out by by government. So I'm just going to have a quick look at the the guidance here, see if I can be 100% on that. Um, but I do know in, in one case at least, Sport England said. Um, they wouldn't fund the club because they got their 10k from the government. Just bear with me, I'll see if I can bring that up. Perfect, and uh, I will, yeah, we'll add that to notes anyway. And uh, a okay. slightly different one, um, I'm not sure if uh, Graham or um, it's uh, do we know much about gift local who are all over Facebook? Who's that? Pass it to anyone who knows anything about gift, gift to local. Funnily enough, I had that as well, and my question, in fact, I've asked Duncan today, and I'm going to ask Sport England, is that when you actually apply, they want the details of your bank account, which is sort of okay, but they also want ID for two members of your club, i.e. they want my passport details with signature. And I rang them about it because I was, I've never in 40 years of fundraising ever had to provide that sort of information and I'm a little bit concerned about giving away that sort of information, a signature and my bank account to an organisation. So I'm just trying to get the background on that. So I think, Arfan, if we may, we'll go back out. That's a great question. and It's a hot topic for me because I wanted to get clearance on it before I started pushing that out to clubs. Um, it may be perfectly OK. And I don't want to speak ill of a company that may be providing a great service. They seem to attract money from businesses and then disperse it to local organizations on the premise it sounds fine but i, I say i just not comfortable at the moment with the background which i need to clarify thanks Graham. and if we when we send the notes out we'll see if we can give more, a bit more information uh duncan did you yeah. get have i given you enough time yeah i've just had a quick look so it does mention um they're unlikely to better help any organisation <clears throat> or individuals that can access support through the government's financial packages. So I think more than likely, if you have got the 10K through um, the government support, you're not going to be able to do, uh, also obtain funding from Sport England. And that was the case in the club that I'm aware of. Um, they will look at exceptional circumstances, but clearly Sport England's fund of 20 million nationally is going to be oversubscribed and it's going to need to go to the clubs most at risk across all sports. So I think the general picture will be 
if you've got funding from your local authority, you're not likely to be able to get some funding from them, I'm afraid. Okay. Can I, sorry, it's Andrew Shields here. Could I, could yeah. I, and it was me that asked that question. Um, yeah, yes, Andrew. Because we, we were unsure that we were going to get uh, a local authority grant of 10K. So we applied to Sport England. Um, now we've heard that we have got 10K and it's gone into our account. We haven't yet heard back from Sport England. I think the question that all three of us were asking, the three different clubs, was do we need to be proactive to Sport England or, or are the funds sufficiently joined up that Sport England will know we got a grant from the local authority? Duncan, can I throw that at you first? You can. I'm not sure 100% how connected they are because obviously they're administered by different organisations. The rate relief is through the local authority, Sport England, um, uh, sort of hands-off organisation from government. We are going to have a national list of clubs um, that have obtained funding from Sport England. So that probably would be one of the questions they'll ask. Um, I think it's just a case of having a conversation with Sport England to pick that up with them. Um, I mean, that funding is is essentially supposed to be going to the most challenged clubs, those really struggling with hardships. So, um, yeah, I'd probably I'd suggest having a conversation with, with Sport England on that front. Yeah, so it yeah, may be... To be fair, not, I, yeah. Sorry, Graham. Sorry. I'll just jump in there. I yeah. had one club who uh, very nobly said, look, we've got our money. And they've done exactly the same as you, Andrew. They, went, they weren't sure they were going to get the 10 grand, applied to Sport England. But as soon as they knew they'd got the money, they've actually gone back to Sport England and said, look, thank you very much. We don't need it. So it would be nice if clubs would do the same, save a lot of trouble and uh, probably they will find eventually and uh, remove you. So I think that's probably the best way, Andrew, but uh, okay. I, I, can't, I can't speak to you. Oh, and have we got any last important ones or can we, we'll put the rest out mm -hmm. on a Q&A? No, um, I'll, I'll put both Beds uh, uh, Hunts uh, um, uh, as well as Cambridge uh, contact details um, on, on the email for us to distribute when we send the link out so everyone's got the access and we have hit 30 minutes. Fabulous. Look, thank you everybody for joining us today. I'm not sure how useful um, it has been. I hope it was some benefit for people. Um, remember, we can share this um, webinar with anybody else in your club if they really want to sit through myself uh, pontificating for half an hour, but we would love to get the message out to as many people. Uh, please remember the next scheduled webinar is on Tuesday at 12 o'clock uh, when we'll be looking at volunteering and safeguarding. And if you've seen the list, it's all over our county website. Also try and encourage you to get as many members of your club